Hi everybody! So this is the last video for this week. I'm just going to go through the riddle from yesterday. Did anybody manage to get it? Well done if you did. Very, very impressive. It was quite tricky. I'll read it one more time and I'll just tell you what it is. So, in fact, I'll tell you first and then when we hear it, we'll figure out why it is that. So it's the shadow of a bird and let's figure out why. It says, I'm part of a bird, but I always stay dry. So a shadow never gets wet, does it? Uh, I fly over land following the bird wherever it goes. Because the shadow's underneath us between... Um, so the thing is between us and the light if we're the shadow, isn't it? So then it says, I can fly across oceans and never get wet. The shadow doesn't get wet again. I can change shape and size. So shadows do change shape and size depending on the light shining on the object. And then it says, I can change from dark to pale. Yeah, that's a shadow as well. You can't catch or touch me. Have you ever tried to catch your shadow? It's impossible, isn't it? It's just, shadows are just uh, a place where light can't get to. If you can see on here, Jerry's making a shadow. So the light is shining down, but Jerry's blocking it. So it can't reach here. So it leaves a bit of a shadow. Can you see that? So the answer to that one is shadow. I'm going to give you another riddle now to ponder. That means think about over the weekend. And your riddle is... Ooh, this is a good one. I am full of holes, but I hold water really well. I am full of holes, but I hold water really well. What could that be? Hmm, have a little think and let me know. Okay, I think we're ready to do our learning today. Let's get going. So we've got some other world music on today. This is from China, this music. So can you get your Play-Doh ready? We're gonna have a bit of a Chinese dough disco today. So get it nice and warm in your hands. And while we're warming up actually with our Play-Doh, we can have a stretch ourselves. So just squish your Play-Doh and stretch your arms up. And swap it over and stretch out. And let's grab it with our hand. Take it to the other side, there's my day. Grab it with this hand. Okay. Can you make a long dragon, a Chinese dragon with your Play-Doh? Roll it nice and thin. You can give it a little snout and eyes if you want to. And maybe some spikes down its dragony back. Or some horns. Remember Chinese New Year when we were learning about Chinese dragons and the dances they do? I know you loved learning about those dances. And we got the ribbons like this and the scarves and we were dancing like that. If you've got some at home, maybe you can make a scarf dance. That'd be really cool. So, can you roll your Play-Doh into a ball? Let's make a nice dumpling. And let's splat it. And on the other side, we're doing our dough disco today because we're not here tomorrow, are we? Because it's VE day. So this is going to be the last video for the week. Okay, can you pinch around the edge and make it look even more like a little dumpling? Have you ever had dumplings? They're really tasty. There are a few different types. There's some English dumplings that we have in stews that are kind of like round. And then Chinese dumplings are usually, they're filled with something in the middle, something tasty. Okay, let's squish it. And squeeze it. Is your Play-Doh getting sticky now? If you're still using the first one, it's probably getting a bit sticky. I might add some more flour to mine to make it a bit more dry. Okay, let's do a dance. Woohoo! Got all your fingers dancing. You can see the little footprints you're leaving. And then stretch your hand. Like that. And let's swap. Let's give this hand a chance now. Let's get dancing. Which hand's better at dancing? Is it your left or your right? Stretch and squeeze. And then what should we do to finish? Should we do a really hard squeeze in that hand? Try to get all the Play-Doh to squeeze out and get all squidgy. And then woohoo! It's jumping out my hands. Let's swap to the other hand. Give it a big squeeze and then pass back over. Let's roll it into a ball and put it away. Well done, guys. For spellings today, uh, we're going to do a little quiz because um, we're not doing it tomorrow, are we? So we're going to do a quiz today with all of the sounds we've done so far. So all those silver phase five sounds. Uh, if you can write numbers, the numbers one to ten down the side of your page, and I'm going to give you your spellings now. Or if you need to have a bit of time, just pause the video to write those numbers. So your spelling number one is joy joy the boy felt lots of joy 
because he was happy. Joy. Question two or spelling two. Boy. Boy. Is the baby a boy or a girl? Number three. Launch. Let's launch the astronaut into space. Launch. Remember to pause the video if I'm going too quickly. The next word is autumn. Remember this one has a ninja letter. Autumn. Five is monkey. That's a cheeky monkey. Six is donkey. Let's go to Blackpool and ride a donkey. I used to do that when I was little because I grew up near Blackpool. Next spelling is like. A tricky word there, like. Do you like cake? I bet you do. I do too. Next spelling is Wednesday. Here's a clue. Wednesday. Next spelling is Saturday. And last but not least, we've got Tuesday. Listen to how I'm saying that. T Tuesday. Okay, I'll say them one more time, super quick. Joy, boy, launch, autumn, monkey, donkey, like, Wednesday, Saturday and Tuesday. That's all your spellings. I'm going to write them on here now. So let me get my... I'll do it in pencil actually today. So the first one was joy, j, oi, joy. Tick for correct and tick for super handwriting. I've done mine a bit wobbly there. I've not started on the line, so actually I don't get a, a double tick. Next one, boy, b, oi, b o y, double tick. That's better, isn't it? It's much more on the line. Next one, launch, l, o. N -ch L A U N C H launch. There's our phase five sound O. Next one autumn O T M with a ninja N at the end. Monkey M O N K E Y monkey. monkey Donkey. D O N K E Y Like L I K E like like L I K E like like Wednesday well done if you've done this with a capital letter I didn't give you a clue then but if you have you have succeeded well done if not don't worry just write it again next to it and then you can have the double tick even a triple one because that's one for capital letter, one for spelling it right, and one for gorgeous handwriting. Next one, Saturday, S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. Saturday. Again, capital S gets you an extra tick. And finally, we've got Tuesday. I hope you didn't do ch, because that's the trick that it wants you to do, but it's t Tuesday with a t. Triple tick. How many spellings did you get right out of 10? Can you write a fraction to tell me how many you got right out of 10? Is it 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 1 out of 10? However many it is, write it on there. And if there's a few spellings you've wobbled with, maybe you can write them under here. One way that um, is a really good one uh, that is on the phonics for this week as well. You can do a scribble. So just do a scribble like that. And then in each scribble hole, you can do a scribble spelling picture. So say... Boy was the spelling you'd got wrong. You could just write boy, boy, boy in that one. Lots of times. As many as you can fit. And then see if you also got wrong the word uh, like, you can choose another scribbly gap to write like in. L-I-K-E, like, like. L-I-K-E, like, like. And if you use different colours, it actually makes it a really pretty picture at the end.
And as well as making a nice picture, it helps us remember the spelling. So you could fill this in with all the spellings that you wobbled with. You can do it more than once. So I could do boy in this one as well. And that just really helps our brain to remember these tricky little things. Well, you remember back to yesterday, we were learning about fact families, something we've had a look at in class as well. So you might see it like this as a triangle, where sometimes it's, it's broken up like that. So it could be 10, 7 and 3, or you might see it like this. It can be different numbers, but there's always three of them. It could be something like 4, 6 and 10, like that. That's a number of 1 to 10 and that's a number of 1 to 10. These are the kinds of pictures you might see, or you could see it like this as calculation. So 7 plus 3 is 10, uh, 3 plus something is 10. So we know that they've just done the lazy swap. So the answer to that would be 3 plus 7 is 10. We're using our knowledge of the family of numbers to solve questions. So what I would like you to do today is I'm going to give you some triangle pictures and and uh, rectangle pictures down here and i'd like you to see if you can write all of the fact family number sentences underneath so i'll show you what i mean for this one all of them would look like this so we know i'll start with the pluses four plus six is ten we know that from our number ones don't we four plus six is ten six plus four is ten and then if I think about the subtraction, we start with a larger number, take one away and we'll get the other, take that away and we'll end up with that. If you need to practice this with Play-Doh, that's fine because it does help us just to get the concepts in our head. You could also write it this uh, swappy way. So you can put 10 equals 4 plus 6. Or you can do 10 equals 6 plus 4. Uh, or 4 equals 10 take away 6. Or 6 equals 10 take away 4. That's the really hard one. That's one that might wobble you, but give it a try if you're feeling brave. So use those pictures to try and tell me all of the uh, fact families you can. For a challenge, I'm going to give you some missing number ones at the bottom to see if you can solve those. Okay, I'll write it on here. It'll appear in a moment. Your challenge of the day. It says write down the fact family number sentences for this one, this one and this one. Then your mega challenge, we've got some missing numbers here for you to solve. Finally, it says 86 plus 22 is 108. That's a big calculation there. So what is 22 plus 86? Ooh, see if you can figure that one out. So pause the video now and give it a try. And I'll go through the answers shortly. The first one, you can have 2 plus 8 is 10. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 take away 2 is 8, 10 take away 8 is 2, and if you've done the swappy ones like that, oops, sorry, like this one, well done, you can have extra ticks for those. This one we've got 16 plus 4 is 20, 4 plus 16 is 20, 20 take away 16 is 4, and 20 take away 4 is 16. The same with this one, 20 take away 2 is 18, 20 take away 18 is 2, 2 plus 18 is 20, 18 plus 2 is 20. For these ones, the missing number for this one was 20, because it's a number bond there, 3 and 17. 21, 10 and 11 is that one. So remember, again, you can write the fact family sentences there. And this one, 8 plus 7 is 15. So that answer there is 7. So this one, this final tricky one, 86 plus 22 is 108. So 22 plus 86 is also... 108. Well done if you spotted that trick. I tried to scare you with big numbers, but all we did really was that lazy swap. We swapped 86 to there and 22 to there. Nothing changed, so the answer is still the same. Well done. In the story of Oliver's vegetables, he starts off by only ever eating chips, doesn't he? And do you remember what we said last time? It's not really very healthy to just eat chips, is it? Have you ever had a food where that's all you want to eat? I know I have and I remember last time I said it was noodles, I used to love them and that's all I wanted to eat but it's not very good for your stomach. It's really good to have the variety of things like fruit and vegetables and if you eat meat then to have some meat and things like beans and all, all the different types of food to keep your body healthy and give it all of the different vitamins 
and minerals that it needs to grow healthy and strong. If he's just having potato, he's not going to have all the things that we get in apples and spinach and rhubarb and um, other different vegetables and fruit or in meat if you want that. So we need to convince him that chips aren't the greatest thing to ha have if that's all you're having. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a letter to Oliver. So how does a letter start? We need to say dear and say who it's to. So d e r d e r. There's that ear sound. We did that, didn't we? Dear Oliver. Oliver's got a capital R because it's a name. Dear Oliver. You can introduce yourself and say, my name is mm -hmm, and I'm writing to, to talk to you about healthy eating, something like that. So I'm going to put my name. Is and then I'll just put a line there so you can fill it with something else. And I am were writing. Writing is a weird word. Were writing. It's got a silent w to you about healthy eating. So. We've got to try and convince him not to just eat chips. Let's imagine that that's all he's still eating. What would we say to him to stop eating those chips? Have a little think to yourself. Hmm. So, my, dear Oliver, my name is blank and I, I'm writing to you about healthy eating. Full stop. It is bad for you. To only eat chips, to only, oops, I've just spelled that wrong. If you spell it wrong, just put a cross through it and then start again. Only, that's a funny spelling, only eat. You know what, I'm going to add an adjective here to really get my point across. It's bad for you to only eat greasy, two a sentence, let's do that, greasy, unhealthy chips. They're good as a treat, aren't they, but not for every meal. It is bad for you to only eat greasy, unhealthy chips because, love that word, you, what will happen if all he eats is chips? Mm, I know the starch in potatoes isn't great for our teeth, especially if it's in fried food like chips and crisps, so you might get rotten teeth. What else might happen? He might start to feel a bit weak because he's not got all the vitamins he needs. Maybe he might even get a bit fat too. He might start to put on weight and feel a bit a bit tired every day. So what should, you can choose any of those or any of your own ideas. It's bad for you to only eat greasy, unhealthy chips because you might get fat. Your teeth might... Your teeth... Hmm? I t rot or ot. Your teeth might rot too. Oh, I'm worrying for Oliver now if that's all he's eating. Your teeth might rot too. So then I'm going to end with a question. Why not try? Eating. I'm going to go on to the next page. Delicious. fruit instead question mark why not try eating delicious fruit instead uh, i'm going to put yours sincerely because that's usually how you end a letter yours sincerely or you can put love from if you want to and then put your name this is just one idea of a letter you can write i'll show you the whole thing now Yours might be completely different, but this is an idea. Let's read it together with our clicks and claps for punctuation. And let's make sure I've got these things. Capital letters, finger spaces, full stops, and make sense. Dear Oliver, my name is blank, and I am writing to you about healthy eating. It is bad for you to only eat greasy, 
unhealthy chips because you might get fat. Your teeth might rot too. Why not try eating delicious fruit instead? Woohoo! You're sincerely. And then put your name. I hope that helps you write your letter today. I'd love to see them if you don't mind sharing. Good luck with that, guys. Topic today, I've taken an idea from someone in our class who shared something on the Zoom um, meeting this week that I just thought was a fantastic idea. There were so many lovely things to see in that Zoom meeting, but this one's just stuck with me for our learning today. So someone in our class made something called a time capsule. So well done for you for coming up with that idea. A time capsule is something that you create. So like a picture or uh, maybe you fill a box with memories and things like that. And what you do is you bury them in the garden or hide them somewhere. So in a few years time, when you look back at your time capsule, it would be like you've traveled back in time to see what you were thinking and feeling and learning about at the time. So what we're going to do today is create a little time capsule that if you want to, you can either hide in your house or ask your adult to help you hide it in a garden if you've got one. So what you need, you might need a little box or a container if you've got one, and then we can think of some things to put in our time capsule here. I'll give you some ideas. One of the ones that um, the person in our class did was, how are you feeling today? So you could answer that, how are you? feeling today? So that could be a first question. You can draw a picture or write about it. Another question, I'll give you questions and then you can answer them on your piece of paper to put in your time capsule. And then I'm going to put, uh, what's your favourite colour? So I'll just put, what is your? And then I'll put different ideas. So favourite colour, food that you like what's it sorry I should put favorite food favorite food favorite color favorite song maybe you've got a favorite song at the moment I keep getting that um let's get physical song stuck in my head from watching the teacher dance it's so cool I love seeing everybody on that so got favorite color favorite song favorite food favorite animal bet you'll all have uh, a really varied thing, a varied um, set of answers for this because we're all different, aren't we? Maybe you could say, what do you want to be when you grow up? So these are the questions. I'll write the questions here, but you're, what you're going to do on your piece of paper is write the answers to these questions so that when you look back, maybe when you're a grown up, you'll look back and think, oh, that's interesting. Maybe you wanted to be, I don't know, like a ballerina or something when you grow up. And then when you're an adult, you can look back and think, oh, that's funny. Or, oh, I am a ballerina now. So it worked. Whatever you want to be or a space uh, an astronaut, I know there's a few people who like space, maybe an archaeologist or a scientist. We've got a lot of scientists in our class as well. So have a think what you want to be and then you can write that one. Maybe you could say how you're feeling about your, um, how, how you're feeling about lockdown because that's what we're all going through at the moment, isn't it? So it's, it's a strange time and it's something we'll all remember. So let's think of something that we remember that we want to share with our future selves. So think of these, you could ask your adult for some extra ideas. Maybe you could hide something in your time capsule, like sometimes people put little toy cars or uh, cutouts from magazines that they like, or maybe storybooks that you can find in the future, or seeds, you could even hide some seeds in there to grow in, in a few years if they last that long. So have a think about things you could put in your time capsule, and then when you've made it and filled it with awesome stuff, you can go and bury it to be found one day in the future. So that's all we've got time for today and in fact for this week, but I'll be back next week for, our, uh, for some more learning. I hope you've had a good time this week and have a lovely weekend and a great VE day celebrating. Take care everybody. Bye!